Привет, друзья! Как дела? My name is Fedor, and learning vocabulary can be hard as is. Finding new words, which words are you supposed to learn even, that can be a true challenge in your Russian. But it can be a bit more fun and a bit more enjoyable if you are reading a story and learning words from the story. So today we're going to have an A2 level story. So if you're a beginner, it might be a bit of a challenge. But I think on average, an average student is about A2 level vocabulary. We're going to read the story first. Then I'll ask you five crucial questions, five comprehension questions to see if you understood the story or not. And then we're going to break it down sentence by sentence. So you choose which words you want to focus on. And then at the end, I'll also send a full list or show a full list of all words used in this text. Let's get right into this. So here is the text on the screen right now. I will read it, of course, line by line, slowly. But you can pause this video now and read it yourself because you have to understand it fully. We're going to have five comprehension questions afterwards. So you have to know this text and understand it for you to answer the questions correctly. If there's a whole bunch of new words, don't worry. We're going to break it all down at the end. So, let's get right into this. Мой первый визит в новое французское кафе был отличным. Я никогда раньше не пробовал французскую еду, поэтому это было для меня что-то новое и удивительное. Кафе было оформлено в стиле Франции. Красивая мебель, интересные аксессуары на стенах, приятная французская музыка. Я выбрал себе столик возле окна и начал изучать меню. Несколько позиций мне были непонятны, поэтому я попросил официанта помочь мне выбрать. Я заказал кофе и круассан, который оказался очень вкусным. Я наслаждался ароматом свежей выпечки и атмосферой кафе. Официант был очень дружелюбным и помог мне понять, что значат некоторые слова на французском языке. Я думаю, что это был один из лучших опытов в моей жизни. Я обязательно вернусь в это кафе, чтобы попробовать еще больше французских блюд. That's the whole text. Now let's get into the comprehension questions. Next! What was the writer's impression of their first visit to the French cafe? Poor, average, good, or excellent? Three, two, one, it was excellent. We'll look at why it was excellent. We're gonna actually, can we go back? Let's finish all the questions and then we can talk about it, you know, kind of where the answers were when we break the text down. Next question, what made the writers visit to the French cafe new and exciting for them? The cafe had just opened, the writer had never tried French food before, the writer had just moved to a new city, his favorite movie, movie was shot in this cafe. A, B, C or D? Which one is it? Three, two, one, the writer had never tried French food before. Correct. Hey, <laughs> next. What was the decor of the French cafe like? Was it modern, rustic, French or flashy? Three, two, one. French cafe, French decor. <laughs> Easy enough. Next, what did the writer do when they found some items on the menu confusing? They left the cafe without ordering. They asked the waiter for help. They ordered random items knowing, without knowing what they were. They decided not to eat anything and just ordered coffee. Which one is it? A, B, C or D? Three, two, one. They asked the waiter for help. Correct. And then finally we have this. What did the writer plan to do after their first visit to the French cafe? Share their experience with family. Return to try more French dishes. Write a blog post about this cafe. Write a good review of this place. Which one is it? A, B, C or D? Three, two, one. Return to try more French dishes. Now, we're gonna. this is line by line translation. And by the way, you're going to have this all available to you with the link in the description, along with the all words from the story. We're going to take a look at that afterwards. But instead of breaking this text down like this, let's open up a PowerPoint and do a bit more like a full screen version of it. 
Let's get right into this right now. Okay, so this is the first sentence. Мой первый визит в новое французское кафе был отличным. My first visit to a new French cafe was great. So, мой первый, my first visit is just an English word for a visit, visit. We have the same exact word in Russian. Of course, it's pronounced more in the Russian way. Новое французское кафе, new French cafe. Был отличный, my, my first visit, был means was, отличный means great. So, my first visit to a new French cafe was great. Next, я никогда раньше не пробовал французскую еду. I had never tried French food before. So, никогда раньше, никогда means never, раньше means before. So, never before had I tried French food. That's kind of the translation there, but of course, in English we simply say, I never tried. But in Russian we say, я никогда не пробовал. So, we can go either with this word, or with this word, or with them two combined. We could say, я никогда не пробовал. I never tried. Я раньше не пробовал. I didn't try earlier or before. So, both can work by themselves and also together. So, that's convenient. Uh, пробовал means tried. Пробовал is tried when it comes to to attempt something, to do something, but also when it comes to food as well. Great, great uh, verb to learn. Французскую еду, French food. Поэтому is a great connector word, поэтому. It means that's why. That's why это было для меня что-то новое и увлекательное. That's why it was something new and exciting for me. This structure для меня is an amazing structure. It means for me. It can be anything. This is good for me. This is bad for me. This is, you know, for me, I like this. You know, it's many different contexts that для меня can be used in. Also, I recommend you learn this word as well. Что-то means something. Новое is new. We already had that before. And then увлекательное means exciting or enticing. Увлекательное. Now, of course, uh, this word увлекательное can be useful, but I would say that other ones are better because they can be used in a variety of different contexts. And like this word, поэтому, right here, right? It's a connector word. So you are explaining your reasoning with this word, поэтому. So, here is our first answer to our question. Why was it new and exciting for them? Because I have never tried French food before. It wasn't because the cafe was new. It wasn't because they moved to a new city. It wasn't because their favorite movie was shot in this cafe. No, it's because they have never tried French food before. And that's why this cafe was, was new and exciting for them. Okay, here's our first answer. Next, кафе было оформлено в стиле Франции. The cafe was decorated in the French style. Here's our second answer. It wasn't rustic, modern, or flashy. So this was uh, just simply in the French style. So кафе, кафе было оформлено. It was decorated. Okay, so yes, pretty, pretty straightforward. В стиле, in a style. Of France, in a style of France, in the French style. Simple sentence. Красивая ми... This is a, right here is the simplest question. We simply are mentioning multiple items that were in a cafe. Красивая мебель. Beautiful furniture. Интересные аксессуары на стенах. Interesting accessories on the walls. Приятная французская музыка. Pleasant French music. I don't think anything is worth highlighting here because it's all pretty much straightforward translation, you know, kind of simple stuff. If you want to take more time with this, take a pause and, you know, kind of go through each of them. But next sentence is, Я выбрал себе столик возле окна и начал изучать меню. So, Я выбрал столик. I chose a table right here. What does себе mean? Себе is not translated in, 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 in this phrase in English. Себе means for myself. I chose a table for myself, like that. We don't really say it like that in English. In English, it's enough to say, I chose a table. But in Russian, we could say, я выбрал столик, we could remove the себе, but I think that that could be also, I chose a table for them or for this person, you know? So, себе is specifying that it's for me. Then we have this structure, возле окна. Возле окна means by the window. Возле means near or nearby or by. And I think that возле окна is also a great phrase to, to learn. But in fact, возле is the 
greatest word because you can say возле дома near um, a house возле стола near the table возле холодильника near the fridge many phrases that can be used with this возле и начал изучать меню and started to learn the menu or began to study the menu or to learn the menu so начал means i began изучать means to learn you might already know изучать because it's common to learn я изучаю русский right i'm learning russian same thing you're learning a menu you are studying it you reading what's on it that's a good phrase as well next несколько позиций мне были непонятно a few positions or a few items мне были непонятны were unclear to me so мне is used but um, a lot of the times мне is translated to i i like i don't like мне нравится for example is one phrase right it means i but мне in fact means to me okay that's the more literal translation of it to me and so a few positions or a few items really непонятны right here means were unclear or were not uh, understood or were not uh, obvious and then мне means to me so a few items in the menu were unclear to me поэтому я попросил официанта помочь мне выбрать поэт again поэтому right again this connector word that's why я попросил i asked попросил in fact is not to ask a question попросил this по makes it into a favor я попросил for him to do something. Официанта помочь. So, to help. So, I've asked him to help. Now, if you have this просил right here with the prefix S, like a C in, uh, in English, that will be to ask a question. Спросил. But we have попросил. So, with по is going to be for a favor. Okay? Официанта uh, помочь мне. Help me or help to me. Выбрать means to choose. Again, this is our answer to when the items were unclear in the menu. What did he do? He didn't just order coffee. He didn't leave. He didn't order whatever he saw without understanding. He asked a waiter for help. That's our third answer so far. Next, я заказал кофе и круассан, который оказался очень вкусным. So, я заказал, I ordered. Okay, great phrase. It can be used for ordering online as well. Coffee и croissant, coffee and croissant. Of course, clear enough because they're all borrowed words. Coffee and и croissant. Который оказался, that turned out or that happened to be очень вкусным. That turned out to be very tasty. Okay, оказался means to turn out to be or to to happen to happen to be something. And here we have uh, turned out to be as well. So оказался is a great word, but I would say in this context, оказался can be a more complicated word, a more a harder word to use in a sentence because the logic with English can be a bit different. But nonetheless, great word to learn. But the phrase that I would think is the greatest one here is я заказал. It can be used with anything. Ordering food, ordering groceries online, ordering packages online, anything. Next we have Я наслаждался ароматом свежей выпечки и атмосферой кафе. I enjoyed the aroma of fresh, fresh pastries and the atmosphere of the cafe. So, я наслаждался. I enjoyed or I bathed <laughs> in, the, in, in, the, in the positive emotion of the aroma of the fresh uh, pastries or bakery. So, aromat means aroma or the, or, or the smell, aromat. Smell is a bit more like a simple uh, term. Aromat is more like aroma, right? More like a romantic thing. Of course, in the French cafe, we have to be romantic, right? So, aromatam свежие выпечки. Свежие means fresh. Свежий. And выпечки means pastry or bakery. Выпечки, okay? И, so, я наслаждался ароматом. I enjoyed the aroma. And atmosphere of the cafe. Атмосфера кафе. So, from this sentence, we can see that аромат, aroma, атмосфера, atmosphere, кафе, кафе. Three words out of seven that are pretty much English or Latin words that we can understand without having to know those words beforehand, right? Aromat, aroma, sounds very similar. So we can even sometimes understand the text without knowing those words beforehand. And that's a great thing. 
официант был очень дружелюбным и помог мне понять. The waitress, or waiter, rather, sorry, был очень дружелюбным, was very friendly. So, дружелюбный, uh, this word right here is a great description of a person, is a nice, friendly person. It's not only friendly that, you know, friendly versus hostile. That's not the distinction. He was welcoming. He was nice. He was responsive. Дружелюбный. You know, sometimes they can be nice to you, but they're not necessarily involved in, in talking to you like that. They can be a bit more like a robot just taking your order, right? Дружелюбный is a bit more than that. It's just being friendly, being actually like a friend to you, I would say. Kind of what friendly is supposed to mean, but sometimes we can confuse friendly versus hostile kind of distinction. While in here, in this sentence, friendly means he was like a friend. Дружелюбный is like that. It means that. It's, it's a bit more than just friendly. И помог мне понять. And helped me understand. So помог мне. He helped me. Also a great phrase right here. Помог мне. He helped me. Can be used in many other situations. Понять means to understand. Что значат некоторые слова на французском языке? What some words in the French language mean? So, значат means to mean. What they mean, what the French words mean. You know, sometimes when you order, it's like this uh, Italian word or this French word that you, even though it's in Russian or in English even sometimes, right? You still have no idea what it is <laughs> because it's like a dish name. Uh, некоторые слова means some words на французском языке in the French language. I would say greatest words here is дружелюбный, this, помог мне, helped me, and значит, this word right here as well, that means to mean something. When you're asking, what does this word mean? Что это слово значит? Значит is used for that. Я думаю, что это был один из лучших опытов в моей жизни. I think that this was one of the best experiences of my life. So, this phrase... Take a note of this. Я думаю, что. In English, we can say, I think he is right. In Russian, we have to say, I think that he is right. Okay? And this, я думаю, что, is I think that. Take this structure and run with it. Say, я думаю, что, and then continue with, it, with your sentence. Okay? It's going to be much better for your, for your Russian kind of to be more complete, I would say. I think that это был, this was, Один из лучших, one of the best, another great structure that can be a bit more advanced, I would say, but один из лучших means one of the best of anything, experiences, restaurants, uh, athletes, actors, bands, all of that, okay? Один из лучших means one of the best. Опытов, without this of, опыт means experience. Okay, opet can be experienced as a one-time experience. I went to the restaurant. That was a great experience. But also can be experience of life too. В моей жизни, in my life. Or of my life. And then I think this is the last sentence. Yes, it's the last sentence here. Я обязательно вернусь в это кафе, чтобы попробовать еще больше французских блюд. Our final answer. I would definitely come back to this cafe to try more French dishes. Okay, so definitely means is right here. Обязательно. Я обязательно. I, I definitely. Вернусь means will return. Вернусь. В это кафе, in this cafe. Чтобы. Another great connector word we had. If we go back a little bit. We had поэтому here once. And поэтому here twice. It's a similar connector word. Where чтобы means in order to. Okay, поэтому was. That's why. But чтобы means in order to do something. Okay? Чтобы попробовать to try еще больше, even more, французских блюд, French dishes. So, еще больше is also a great phrase here. I would say that these one, two, three, four, five words or structures are great takeaways from this sentence. Обязательно means definitely, for sure. Обязательно. It can be a simple answer. Hey, are you going to come to this party? Обязательно. For sure. Definitely. Or it can be used like in, in this sentence right here. I will definitely come back. Okay? Вернусь means I will come back. Uh, чтобы in order to. Or with the goal of. And then we have попробовать. To try. 
to attempt something. But in the context of food, it means to try a certain dish. Yeshua больше means even more. Yeshua means more, больше means more as well. So more, more. <laughs> but of course, we say even more French dishes. Okay, now this was the whole text. We are now about to look, take a look at all the words that were used in this text as well and to see which one of them which words were a1 which words were a2 b1 b2 and before we do that guys we have 12 of these stories on our bfluent class platform we have the same exact approach where you read a text you then answer the questions and then you go over each sentence with me i do a similar breakdown as well in those 12 stories so check it out with the first link in the description if you liked this text and if you learned a whole bunch of words I can guarantee you that you will find those 12 stories even more useful because we have 3A1, 3A2, 3B1, and 3B2 level stories. So for any of you guys of any level, you'll find a story just for you, okay? So now let's go over the all the words that are used in this text and the level. Right here we have a word translation, times that it was used in this text, and the level of the word. So total we have 79 words, we're not counting the first one because it's just simply the, the title. So 79 words total, not a lot of kind of different words, right? But some of them like ya yeah and bitch and e are used more than one time, of course. And then we have A1, A2, B1, B2, C1, C2 level words. I would say, unless you're super advanced, don't even look at, the, at this list right here. B2 can also wait. B1, no, this can be a bit more enticing to learn. But I would say start with A1 and go from top to bottom and highlight the words that you don't know. Let's say, okay, I know ya, I know bit, I know e, I know, okay, выбирать. Hmm, let me highlight this word right here, выбирать. Cool word to choose or select. Great word to learn. And then you go down and you highlight more words, right? You highlight this one. You go and highlight this one right here as well. So you go and highlight the new words for you. If you have a set of 15 or 20 words, that's going to be more than enough. Of course, A1 might be easy. Then scroll down to A2 level words. And then if that is easy, go to B1, B2, C1, C2. That's going to be a great kind of progression to you. But also, right here on the right side, we have this list of key words in this text. What does it mean? It means that without knowing these words, you're going to have a hard time understanding the text itself. Some of the other ones can be, you may not know them, and you will still understand the text correctly. If you think about it, right? Franzuski, French, cafe, um, um, waiter, to choose, to help, very, new, to be, friendly keywords in this text that if you know them you're going to have a much easier time understanding it as well so you can go over these again with the link in the description and do whatever you want with them and learn them as well and that's it from me like i said we have more of these stories on our bfluent class click the first link in the description and check them all out we have 12 stories total if you like this video you will enjoy that content there as well check it all out with this button right here or continue learning russian on our youtube channel with this next video here enjoy